We need to carefully handle the data that passes through our applications, be it our APIs or any other application. Third-party applications send data to our applications, and we have no control over what type of data they send, but we can set a standard of what we expect the models to be. One way to achieve this is through validation of the said models. In this video, we will demonstrate how model validation can be done. For those that are new to this channel, welcome to Code and Parallel, where we demystify coding and show you step by step how to develop professional applications. If that's what you're about, then let's head over to Visual Studio and validate our models. All right, so let's fire Visual Studio and let's quickly create a new project. Select the API project, click Next. Let's call it Model Validation. Uh, dot API. Uh, the demo solution just say dot demo. Hit next. Leave everything as it is. So our app is uh, created. Let's just delete the weather forecast as well as the weather forecast controller. So let's say you want to set a standard on how a user is created. So whoever is going to hit our API needs to subscribe to that standard. Okay. So first of all, let's create a folder called models, which is going to house the models within your, your API. So let's create a class called user. Call that user and let's give it an ID. Uh, we could give it a string username. That's going to bring some errors, to not some warnings about null. I'm going to ignore that for the sake of not having so much code. Uh, you could have, this guy should have an email. Um, should have a password. And maybe let's give it A phone number, all right, and then let's create a controller which we're going to use to invoke this. So I click add controller, make sure it's an API controller, read write. Um, we're going to call that users controller, users controller. All right, so I, I'm, I, I'm going to keep just one endpoint because. This is us getting from the for, from the client. So we're going to use the post. It should be enough to demonstrate our point because we want to focus on receiving from the user. So let's say from we want to receive a user. Yeah, control dot to add it and call that user. So this is the it's this is the this is the object that we'll get from the endpoint, a user. And we want to make sure this user conforms to our standard. So that whatever comes from the user, from the API clients, we shall make sure it's valid because you cannot trust third party systems in, in any application. And your APIs need to be self-sustaining as far as handling validation is concerned. So usually you're gonna have some operations here, all right? But, for that to happen, you need to, to validate. So let me just put an action result here. So for sake of showing, we, we, we're going to return the same user and we're going to say return and okay, say user. So we're saying, whatever I get here, give it back to me, all right? Now I'm going to control F5, press control F5 so that we see what happens without validation, how this thing's 100, and then we're going to see how we can bring in validation to count that. All right, so, so a lot. Now, let's try it out. So I'm gonna send the zero, the string, everything as, as it comes there. If I send, I expect it to give me back whatever I created, right? And it sends me back everything, and it's fine. But there's a problem here. 
you see, the, the email is not, is, is not a valid email. You know, at least there should be an ad symbol or something. The phone number is not even valid. So how do you make sure that these things conform to your standard, right? So one of the ways in, through which you can conform to your standards is by using data annotations, which we're going to use in this video. And maybe in the next video, we can bring other sorts of validations. So what are annotations? So for instance, if I come here and say, this field is required, and I press control dot, it brings in the data annotations over there. So it says, this means that this ID is required. And if you're using Entity Framework to also create your models, these also help a, a ton to guide Entity Framework to, to, to make sure that this field is unnullable. So let's say, we're going to say, all these fields need to be required, all right? So let's add they're required. That required and this required, right? All right, so let's let's try one. Let's say the email. So there is a data annotation is called email address. And as it says, it predicts an email address, all right? So let's 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 try that out. To see if we can really validate an email address. So control F5. Okay, now it's now you see that um now, instead of putting that, let's put string again. If I put string and executing it, it will tell you clearly that the field called email is not a valid email address. So now we are safe. If somebody sends something that doesn't conform to how an email address is, is, is structured, our API is going to deny. All right? Now, let's take it a step further. And let's say we want... A username to have a minimum of because the, the the way it is now if i put just an s there on the username and execute you will see that it will pass or that it will deny is the email but now i want to also limit the username so i'm going to say every username should have let's say a minimum length say of three right and it should have a max length of whatever suits your, your I'll, I'll make it 10, all right? So let's press Ctrl 5 and see how that is going to translate here. And this is going to reload. So we've seen the email validation. We'll leave it at that. So if I do this, uh, and the username, let me just put one character over there. Put, put one character, let's put one. I put two, it's fine. Two, so, so two should tell you, should also throw an error. It should say, well, this is the minimum. Uh, so there it says, it says the field username must be string or array type with a minimum of three. And if I add more to make it more than 10, it should also yell to you to say, has, must be, so it tells you. So we are protecting our API, if if you may. Now, what else might you want to bring in? Uh, we've, we've brought in max length, min length. There's actually a lot. There, there's, um, there's, there's a lot you can do. But uh, some people might want to have more control over how one thing is structured. So we could use what we call regular expressions. Now, if you love regular expressions, I do love them too, but they could be messy. So there's this website that I usually use. It's called ihaterejects.io. So it gives you whatever you want to do. So let's say, uh, let's choose phone number. So this is the pattern it expects. So the plus and whatnot. And this is the, the rejects or the regular expression. So rejects is just 
uh, the short form. So it shows you the start, the out, and how however it's formed. That could be a topic on its own. But so this 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 right here, if I copy it, it should be enough to validate a phone number. So if I come here and say, I'll put here regular. Oh, sorry, I put regular expression and in. in in brackets i put that now by default it comes escape characters but for for our purposes i think that's what needed uh it's going to escape once on if i do this then this field is expecting a phone number all right so let's press control f5 and see uh, control f5 and let's see that. Uh, are we loading? Okay, so it's loading. So it should reject our phone number because it's a string, but it expects a special type of string. So let's say phone string. If I hit that, uh, you will see that it tells you the phone number hasn't matched like the like expression. So we have, we have handled that. If I put, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and execute, you will see that it does that all right. Okay. So let's add one more rejects for the for the password. So go to the home page. And there are many. There, you can do an IP address, a date, a username. Let's try password. Uh, and this one says, must be a minimum of eight characters, at least one uppercase, English letter, one lowercase. What? So, so eight characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, and special character, and it's this one. So let's copy this. And we're going to come to the user. And under password, we're going to add a regular expression. And there. And let us see how far that will take us. So if I'm to, okay, it's loading. Post, try it out. Uh, since we've changed the phone number, I'm gonna have to put a real phone number, so I'll just focus on the, so if I just put string there, it should say no. So it will tell you the fit password doesn't match. So it wants at least eight characters. So we want eight characters. Once more, one there should be there should be a number and a special character. Let's put asterisk and execute, and you see that that comes. So there you have it. Uh, with just a few lines of code, uh, a bit of data annotations and rejects for precision, you have yourself a data validation model. So, if this was valuable, may you please uh comment, subscribe, and share. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next as I release the next video in the, in the next few days. Thank you very much and have a lovely night.